What we've got on the bench today is the Marshall Valstate 40V, otherwise known as the Model 8040, supposedly a 40 watt amp, has a Celestian 12 inch speaker. It's an interesting amp, personally, I think it's underrated. Um, it has one input here. Preamp out, power amp in, line out and a foot switch so you can switch between the two channels. I don't believe the normal channel is particularly good, I don't think it sounds that great. It's, uh, it's nothing like a Fender, it's a sort of fairly uninspiring channel, but it might sound okay with uh, some pedals in front of it. However, what makes the amp worthwhile is the boost channel. It has a little boost button here. You've got your bass and treble, your volume, which works in conjunction with the gain. Um, there's a contour scoop knob here. Now, I used to play through this quite a lot, and I did... Um, gigs and things with it and I found the best setting was the everything at 12 with the gain um, I th I'm not sure how high the gain was but I think it may have been halfway and then I had the volume halfway if I could get it that loud depending on the venue so it's sort of almost everything at 12 um, you can turn the gain right up here and get a fairly sort of uh, heavy metal kind of sound if that's what you're into Anyway, what happened with this amp? Um, it stopped playing basically, the sound cut out, it was intermittent and then it disappeared altogether. I took it in for repair. The guy that uh, had a look at this, he took it apart. What, from what he told me, he um, resoldered all the joints, thought maybe there was some cracking or a loose connection somewhere on the board. So he went through all that and uh, that didn't seem to work and then he came over here and started cleaning all these out and the problem went away. So the signal from the preamp comes out here where it says preamp out and that's a signal, a line out that is suitable for driving a effects processor for example um, and the return would go back into the power amp in. This could also be used um, for an external preamp. You could connect it to this to use the combo as a, an amplifier effectively. So ordinarily, um, when you're playing through the guitar, the signal comes to the preamp output socket and it's bridged across to the power amp. When you put the jack in, it cuts the connection between the two sockets and it, it goes out to whatever equipment you're using and it would come back in here into the amp and then out through the speaker. What happens though is the terminals or the connections on the top of the jack socket they start to rust and the signal coming in one side of the jack socket is not making it across to the other side and there's a chance it could happen on this one or a chance it could happen on this socket and when those start to corrode and the signal's not passed across into the power amp the amplifier is, is in effect dead it doesn't work the foot switch here is just to switch the boost channel this one here on and off. So when you're in the off position it's the normal channel in operation when you switch in the foot switch it switches over to the boost channel. There's a guitar plugged in. We've got nothing coming through on this channel. I've got the volumes down here but I've turned the boost on. Okay, what you can hear is a very distorted, faint sound. Normally that would be ear-piercingly loud. I will turn it down a bit. If you bypass this by taking the signal out of the preamp, preamp out and putting it back into the power amp, you can immediately hear You can hear some sound, can't you? Well, I don't have a pick, so I'm not going to play any more. But you can see the problem. So these need to be cleaned. So it's got a very loud hum, so I'm going to take it apart and have a look. If this is something that will interest you, stick around and we'll see what it looks like inside. 
our supply there that supplies the voltage to the tube. It's a 1287, you can see it sitting there on the board. Back here you've got your reverb tank, three spring reverb, you can just see the springs there, the end of the springs. Right, everything on this board, they're the capacitors, these are your main electrolytics there. There's a number of them on the board. There's another big one. You can see the sockets there. Those are the ones that will clean. There's all the pots. There's another socket, that's the input socket. Everything in this amp is connected to this board, except for, of course, the power transformer there. So, to get to anything, you have to take the whole board out. You have to unscrew every jack, every pot, and then I would hope that the uh, the board will come out. I don't see anything else holding the board down weirdly. It's almost as if it's just suspended by the things in the front. Uh, well, there's a couple of clips. You can see a clip there. There's one there. And I see another one there. So there's a few clips. What I meant to say, at this point you could service the amp, you could actually have cleaned the sockets here from the front, possibly by squirting some cleaner inside the socket from the front, pushing and pulling a jack in and out. Um, the other way is that you can do it from here and try to get something underneath these terminals and just like a very fine piece of emery paper and just try to clean them that way. Of course all the pots in my amp are very scratchy so this is the best way now to clean all those, just squirt some cleaner in these holes and turn the knobs in the front backwards and forwards, that should clean it up. And that may be enough for most people. Um, I'm going to take the board out anyway and have a look at these um, capacitors. I think I might just go ahead and change them out while, I'm, while I've got the board out and check the tube, make sure the tube's okay. So after removing all the nuts on all the pots and over here, I was able to lift this out. There are a couple of retaining clips. And I also noticed that there's some quite bad burning on the circuit board. Well, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's obviously been heated up over time. And there's a couple of resistors down there. Uh, can I show you? If you haven't seen them already, it's these guys here. They're obviously getting hot. I might need to change the, um, the wattage of those. So you can see here how black the circuit board is. It's all scorched here, all the way around here. Same down here. Now, right here, the resistor has lifted. The wire has literally poked through the board. The solder's lifted up. I've got my pointer underneath the solder joint here. There's a big gap here. And I suspect that what's left of the trace is on the bottom of this solder. And over here we've got a similar situation where the trace is lifted on this side. You can see the thing here just disappearing underneath. It's still attached here, but it's lifted on this side. So this is basically ready to fall off and bring the trace with it. So here's a little diagram to explain what happened. Uh, this here is the, uh, the, the circuit board and here the darker line is, represents a trace and you can see a resistor sitting there. One of the leads has gone through the, the circuit board through the trace and is soldered on the bottom. You can see that little lump there representing the solder. Um, and what's happened in this case is the resistor has dropped um, pulling down the uh, trace with it and it's come unglued and at a later point um, it has literally broken free here so it's breaking the contact disconnecting the, the resistor from the rest of the circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the solder on the component and to see if I can take the component out and then we'll have a look at the trace and see how much damage there is.
not going to be able to solder sucker that away. I'm going to have to lift it up, up and off the, uh, the lead here. There we go. So that is actually what's left of the trace. Let's see how this one comes off. Seems to be a similar problem. Hmm. I might have to try to pull this out while I'm heating it. the trace I'm afraid. That's one lead. out. Well that's a right old mess. You can see the trace is gone completely. There's a little bit of it sticking up. What we see here is the circuit board, the material that it's made from. And over here we've got the same problem. These trace is completely gone. So it's got to be repaired. So I guess the next thing to do is to try to get rid of the green uh, insulation material and just find out exactly what's going on here. I found this shape tool to be more useful. I've just been going backwards and forwards very gently. Try to get rid of the super glue. I'm trying to get a flat surface here that I can bond something else to. able to do the same thing up there. Actually clean this up now. Let's go rid of the glue. It's nice and flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is to scrape off the green um, insulation up here to reveal the copper. We're both sharing the magnifying glass here but I've been scraping very gently come up. Even that's not stuck down. This is a bit more difficult. There's super glue here unfortunately. It's going to require some gentle persuasion. Gentle scraping so I can try to get rid of the super glue to give myself some sort of surface um, to put the trace back. So these are the things I use to affect the repair on the trace. Um, well, first of all, there's the, there's the little turret there, which you can see. And in order to fit that, the, the bottom of the turret... Hang on a second, it's rolling everywhere. The bottom of the turret has a pin that sticks out. That is one millimetre across. And so that, that there is a one millimetre drill bit, which I used to um, drill through the circuit board. It's very fiddly and very small. I have to be very careful. Now this stuff here is copper and it's actually um, 
used in gardening. It's designed for um, labelling plants and things like that, but it is pure copper and you can cut it with a pair of scissors. So we've got a fairly stout pair of scissors, it will cut quite neatly. So the copper that I'm using is 0.19 of a millimetre, or 1.8 actually, it's just gone down. So it's quite thin, um, it's probably not as thin as the original trace, but um, it doesn't look ungainly or out of place really once it's soldered in. I don't think you'd even notice there'd been a repair. If you can imagine, this is the trace, and this here is the hole which we're going to put the component through. The trace would normally have come out, out like this, and this would have been in the centre of the, of the continuation of the trace. But because it broke away, the only bit of trace that's available to connect to is this bit here. So with an X-Acto knife, something very much like this, I went backwards and forwards cleaning the green uh, insulation material off the trace to get this nice and shiny at which point I cleaned it with um, rubbing alcohol to get it as clean as I possibly could. So if you imagine this is the green covered trace going on to the next connection. This is the bit that I've scraped clean and then I've used rubbing alcohol to get it nice and clean. And then I put flux on it. So I've got a bottle of flux here which I used. So I brushed the flux on and then I got some solder and the soldering iron and I just flowed some solder onto this point so that this was covered in a thin layer of solder. The next thing is I fabricated this piece of trace here uh, to complete the circuit and I cut it to the appropriate shape. It's a sort of sock shape or L shape in the, in the diagram. I cleaned the underside of it, particularly uh, at this area where it was going to make contact with the existing trace and then uh, fluxed it all again on both sides and heated this up and pushed it down into the solder that was underneath it to get the joint and that worked just fine at which point I pushed the turret through the board from the other side so the the turret piece is sticking up if you will it's coming through a bit like this At that point then I fluxed all of this and flowed solder around here and the solder actually was quite happy just to flow down here um, and when I initially when I pushed this down I'd had enough solder underneath it so a lot of it would sort of came up on top so by the time I'd finished um, this whole thing was covered with solder and bonded to the pre-existing piece of track or trace that was available. So the pin can't push down through the board, so the resistor is sitting very comfortably on top here, uh, being soldered to both pins. Uh, that's not going anywhere. It stops this problem of the, of the uh, wire pushing through and tearing off the trace. And of course when it's all soldered together, the pin won't lift, it's all locked together nicely. Well I hope that made sense. It's a process of a number of steps, but you can see here at the end the result. So this is where the turret came through. This bit here is where the, the old trace would have got about this far. Then there'd be the little bit of copper here to, to bridge from the turret to the existing trace. And then it just all ended up flowing with solder very nicely. It's very strong. And I've done the same thing up here. This is the sock one that I was drawing for you. It's sort of almost at a 45 degree angle. But it's all solid and it's all in place and I have continuity and with the turrets on the other side there's no way that this would ever come loose as far as I can tell because there'll never be any pressure, downward pressure on this again. So I think this will be just fine. So as I described it you can see the pins here sitting on top of the circuit board. There's four gold pins, one at each end of both resistors. Um, and the resistor wire comes down, it's just wrapped once around the pin and soldered in place. Now the pin is sitting on the board, it's not going to go through. They're very secure, they're not moving around. Uh, super rigid actually, so I don't see there'll be any problem there. Okay, just going to recap where I am so far. I've changed this capacitor here, this small one. That was in bad shape. 
Um, it seems to have cleaned this, the sound up quite a bit. The electrolytics here for the tube, 350 volt ones, they're fine. There doesn't seem to be any problem with those. The ESR is very low and they measure spot on, so I'll leave those in. I've done an ESR a capacitance test on all of the capacitors. These two are running quite high. They're, they're supposed to be 2200 UF, they're 2530 or something, around about there. So these have gone up quite a bit. I've picked up a couple of replacements, they're a little bit smaller. I measured these, the ESR is also very low. Instead of 2200 UF, they're just over 2000, so they're 200 low. And these are over 300 high. But capacitors do tend to increase in capacitance as they start to wear out. There's hot glue on the board here, which I've got to remove. So I'm going to scrape that away. I've got my hot glue gun over there warming up, so I'm going to put some hot glue back underneath the capacitor as I've se uh, seated down. Seems to be what they've done here, just to hold it in place. So anyway, I've uh, bedded down the, the two new electrolytics on some hot glue, which is the way it was done before, so they're just sitting a couple of mil up off the board. And I'm going to do the backs here. Hmm, that one doesn't seem to want to stick. Well, I took the capacitor out again. It was actually the hot glue that was coming through and uh, interfering with the soldering. There we go. So I'll clean that up and now it's working again. Okay, so those are good. I'm going to snip those off. The jack socket there has been replaced. The terminal at the back was open and I think it was causing the amp to hum. That was part of the problem, so I replaced that. Before putting your circuit board back into the chassis, just be aware that the jacks in this case had these spacers and what that does is it the spacer lines up with the edge of the circuit board so that when you tighten the nut in the front you're not pulling this uh, jack socket forward which would strain the soldering and the circuit board so it just lines everything up with the circuit board there's one missing here which I've got to locate I put a new input socket here and that requires two of these washers it's slightly different size than the, than the original and that'll bring this up in line with the edge here. Well, I was able to find a washer on an old jack that I had. I couldn't find the one that fell off here, but I'm sure it will turn up. But they seem to be the same size. Um, I've got my double washer down here, and now I'm going to try very carefully to refit this without them falling off. Okay, well, that was easier than I had anticipated. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now the board is back in place, and it's sitting on these little towers or um, plastic supports, which you have to push it down onto. Oops. Okay. Uh, there's one there, one there. There must be another one somewhere, I would think. Maybe not, just the two. I'll just double check, make sure it hasn't fallen off or something. Now, surprisingly, there are only two of these uh, support pins, that one and this one, and the whole of the board back here, including the 
uh, the reverb tank is sort of just sort of suspended in the air. So not a great design. Um, the next thing is to put the retaining clip for the speaker wire, which is through the hole there. Online, I was able to buy these. Uh, they are reported to be the right size for these pots, so I'm going to. I'm about to find out. So I've got a 10 mil socket uh, or a 13 32nd a US or Imperial will do. Handed on doing this to the camera, it's a bit difficult. Okay. I'm not doing them up tight. Anyway, you get the idea just to put them all on. I decided to go with the new ones across the board, I thought that would look nice. Um, the original ones were. Uh, brass, actually that is an original one, you can see that's a brass one. Uh, a bit dirty now, a bit tarnished. So I'll keep them all the same, so it looks like they're supposed to be this way. Oops. Okay. So I've got all my nuts on the front. Uh, put the wire strain relief or the clamp here. I've tightened these up as tight as I can. Those are the two uh, bolts that hold the earth terminals on the other side. That's the ground for the chassis. I'm just cleaning up the plastic jack nuts and these these guys here and the knobs. They were quite dirty, so I'm giving those a bit of a bath in here. You can see. Just soaking in there, that's a little bit of hand soap and some warm water. Right now I'm putting the Celestian 12 inch speaker back into the cabinet. I did a lovely restoration on this cabinet, I made a video about that, um, which will accompany this video like a part two I guess. So if you want to see how I clean this up, uh, take a look at that. That's the tear down and the cleaning up. And um, now I'm putting it back together. I'm putting the amp in now. So I'm dropping it in with it laying flat. This way it will drop in nicely. There are four screws which come in from the top. They just they're very small screws, they're very light. I'm surprised that's all they used. That's all they used. They're like this. They're tiny little things. They just screw into some uh, into the metal work and into a kind of clip. This uh, volume pot has been pinched together somehow. So what I'm doing is I'm putting an electrical screwdriver down the back here where it's the widest part and just prying it slightly and then I'm taking a pointed tool like a brado and just pushing it in the end here at the center just far enough to open it open it up to put the knob back on just turn the the pot all the way to the left and your knob obviously has an indicator uh, painted on it so line that up with the zero in this case you may have to move it a couple of times until it locks in the way you want it and then push it home, that's a good fit. There we go, and that moves from 0 to 20 as it should do. There she is, the marshal is finished. All the knobs are back, everything has been fitted and tightened. All the rivets have been darkened up. The entire case has been completely cleaned and scrubbed inside and out, it's been taken apart, it's been serviced, all the relevant parts have been changed, it's been reassembled, it's looking absolutely mint, 
almost like a new amp. It's hard to tell the difference really between this and a new amp. I'm going to use the clean channel or the normal channel. I've got a strat plugged in. Uh, it's a neck pickup. Middle pickup. Full treble on the guitar. sound. to be honest. That's just with the bass and the middle pointing upwards and the full treble. Thank you. 